Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So we're continuing to look at uh, server-side JavaScript, specifically XSJS in the XS Advanced environment. Um, we've seen some of the basics of utilizing the XSJS and XSO data framework. Uh, we've learned a little bit about the JavaScript language itself and also how to debug XSJS and, and Node.js code in the uh, SAP Web IDE. Let's look at a couple of specific application development scenarios and how they can be achieved using XSJS. And the first one we want to look at in this video is um, how to make outbound HTTP calls. So of course, you know our services are running inside the HANA database and we have direct access to the tables and views and we can retrieve a lot of data. And that's Probably mostly what you're wanting to do, you're want, wanting to expose data from the underlying database. Sometimes you want to combine that data with something from another system that you need to retrieve in real time that isn't stored in the HANA database. Now, of course, you know there's different approaches that you could use to do this. You could set up, um, you, you know, you could use uh, smart data access, smart data integration to kind of federate the data or federate the query and, and actually combine data within the database from, from multiple sources. Uh, but maybe this isn't a scenario where it's, you know, purely database driven. It's not as though you just have a distributed data. Maybe you have a truly external partner that has some RESTful service that you want to call and in real time um, do something. I mean, it doesn't have to be just data retrieval. Maybe you trigger an operation, uh, an activity, an update, or something like that in, an, in another system. Or maybe you want to interact with, a, with an ABOP system at the ABOP level. You want, you, you know, even if the data is available at the, at the HANA level, we of course can't, um, can't make updates or, or inserts directly into the database tables um, that are managed by the ABOP layer. If it's an ABOP-based application, we'd have to call a service. So we might use Gateway to generate a OData service and then call that maybe from XSJS. That's just uh, some examples of how we could use this functionality. Now what we're going to use for this video is um, the Library of Congress in the United States has uh, some free APIs that are available on the internet. And I like to use these for demos because uh, one, they, they are completely free to use, so you don't have to sign up, put your credit card in, or you know pay anything, register an account. Uh, they're completely open and available on the internet. Um, they don't require any authentication. They don't require any API keys. So just for an educational purposes, it allows us to focus on the mechanics of what we have to do within HANA in order to... Um, make an external call without a lot of additional setup and complications that might be involved uh, if you were truly interacting with a with an external system uh, so you know just keep that in mind that you know if you were um, if you were calling say uh, a partner system or something like that there almost certainly is going to be at least authentication maybe an exchange of certificates and and uh, api keys and things like that that would that would go along with this as well the other thing that I want to point out is uh, we're going to get to a point here where we're going to access, you know, we're going to have to put in the URL of this external system. And um, you may have to adjust, you know, if you're going to follow along and do this in your own system, uh, you may have to adjust for the fact that you may be sitting behind a firewall. You know, many corporations, uh, your laptops, your personal laptop is behind a corporate firewall, behind a proxy. And you need proxy settings uh, to be able to get to the outside internet. Now, uh, I at SAP, uh, the, the way that I work, I do not sit behind a firewall. Um, I can directly access the internet, therefore I will not need proxy settings when I do these, uh, do these exercises. But I'll point that out when we get to that uh, again. All right, let's let's uh, let's go back over to our development environment. And uh, even before we start coding, uh, we're going to need something where we maintain the URL and the credentials and, and everything that we're going to use to access this external system. We don't want to hard code any of that in our project and or, or in our source code or module or anything like that if we can avoid it. And what we can use in the XS Advance or in the Cloud Foundry environment is the concept of the user provided service. This is actually the 
And I would say the intended purpose or the original purpose of a user provided service is really to maintain external credentials for, for an external destination. We used this concept earlier uh, to be able to configure connections back to the Honor database and, and just be able to use different usernames and passwords for our granting, you know, when we were accessing cross schema and cross container. Uh, but uh, we can also use this to connect to completely external websites um, outside the network and things like that. And, and it has a full range of configuration options uh, for setting up the security uh, parameters and things like that. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to set up one of these uh, user-provided services. Now we don't use the wizard like we did earlier in the database module. Uh, that was a specific wizard for just when you want to use a user-provided service for the cross-container scenario. So you know it was set up to connect to another HANA database or, or connect back to the same HANA database uh, that we're sitting on top of. We want the full um, interface for creating a user provided service. So for that, we'll go over to the uh, administration tool. Now, one of the neat things that we can do here is from the web IDE, if you come up to tools, you can click on uh, HANA XS Advanced Cockpit and it will open the cockpit in another window for you. So you don't have to go look up the URL or the port that, that it's running on. Um, now, I'm going to do this in the on-premise world, so of course I'm using the SAP HANA XS Advanced Cockpit. If you were doing this in the cloud platform, you would be using the cloud platform cockpit. The user interface, the navigation is, is extremely similar, and, and the concept of what we're creating here, the user-provided system uh, service, is the same in both environments. Um, so what I need to do now is I'll drill into my development space because all of our user provided services are space specific and I will choose that I want to go to user provided services and I see the ones that already exist here in the system and I can just say I want to create a new one so I'll say new instance and I will give it a name here so SAP HANA demo content EPM services images zero zero and uh, we actually have uh, we can take out the sample content because what we need is this is going to be very simple because we just need a HTTP port which this is running on port 80 and then we need a host and let me correct that we need a host, and it's going to be www.loc.gov, libraryofcongress.gov. And then if you want to help loading it and document what this is, we can add a tag. So we'll say tags, and then the tag will be xshttp dest. And that's it. That's all we really need here. Um, because like I said, I'm not behind a firewall, so I don't need to add any proxy settings in here. Uh, I can directly access this website. And what we'll be going to is we'll just be going to, we can test the website itself, librarycongress.gov. And what we see here is it loads the Library of Congress. And at um, uh, within our application itself, we can actually add the rest of the path that takes us to the specific API. We only need the base configuration here in the uh, user provided service. So I will go ahead and save this. And now I have a user provided service. It's not bound to any applications yet. Um, we're going to go back to the to the web IDE to do that part. So just like our other user provided services, we define them as resources in the MTA YAML. So that's the first thing we want to do is we want to come here to our resources tab and we see some of our earlier user provided services. Uh, we just want to go ahead and create a new one here and we'll give it the same name SAP HANA demo content EPM services images and then the type is org cloud foundry existing service and by saying that it is a um, it is an existing service that expects that you will have pre-created it an administrator will have pre-created it the MTA won't try to manage create or, or adjust the user provided service when you deploy it so we're really just connecting to something that already exists 
That way, maybe this could be shared between multiple services. And we want to give it a service name. And this is the specific name that uh, we gave it, the physical name here. So I'll make sure I don't do any typos. I'll cut and paste it. And then down here in our properties, we want to add a property. Um, so we'll name this uh, XSHTTP Dest Images Service Name. And we will assign the service name to it so that we can create a variable for this name. So we don't necessarily have to reference the service name directly. There we are. That looks good. Now, what we want to do is, if I would go over, I want to add it to my module as a requirement, but if I come to the modules and I would try to add it, it isn't going to show up in the drop-down list box yet. Fortunately, the drop-down list boxes don't automatically update when you add a new resource. It's only on loading of the editor. Uh, so a little trick that we can do here is we can just switch quickly to the code editor and then switch back to the MTA uh, graphical editor and that will reload all the drop-down list boxes with all the new possible values, like the one that we just added. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, uh, something that tricks people up a little bit at first. They, they would come here and they would go to add their, their dependency to add it as it requires, but uh, then they wouldn't see it in the drop-down list box. But that's how you can get around it. So we'll just go ahead and add that user-provided service. There are no additional properties or anything we need to maintain on that, and we can just save it. All right. Now, in the previous exercise, we should have imported a bunch of stuff here in the SAP HANA Demo Content EPM services. And when we did that, we actually already imported the, uh, the code that we, uh, that we need here called Outbound Test. So we see it right here. Um, we'll talk through the source code here in a second, but one thing we need to do is we need to come here in this read destination. We need to add our uh, uh, group number to the to the end here. Uh, actually, images dot zero zero. All right, because um, I can't know in the in the template code what your what your group number is and if we were doing this in a classroom setting I might have many different people working on the same server and they're all creating their own user provided service so we use that group number to separate them uh, but basically this is the code that we need inside of XSJS where we can load our destination um, this is going to create the outbound HTTP connection it's going to get all the connection parameters from that user provided service so we're not having to code any of them here in um, inside our, our logic, inside our code itself. Um, and then we're going to make a, an HTTP request, a GET request to that service. We're going to pass in some, some parameters. And we're going to make the request, and then we're going to get the response back. And the response body will have some content in it. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the image search. Um, so just on the URL, we can type in what text that we want to search for, and it's going to bring back JSON that has a list of images uh, that, that match that, that criteria. Um, and uh, then we're going to be able to display the image in the, in the web browser. So pretty, pretty straightforward there. The, um, uh, the main thing that we want to do now, though, is uh, we need an XS HTTP destination. This was something that we had in XS Classic. This was actually a, a configuration file that in turn would, uh, uh, that we could go into the admin tool and maintain our destination, our security parameters. Well, all that functionality from the admin side has been replaced by the user provided service, but we use the XS HTTP destination artifact kind of as a, as a proxy to, to point to that um, user provided service. So what we want to do here is we want to take this file and we'll just copy it and we'll paste it. And we'll name it uh, images.00.xshttp dot zero zero dot XSHTTP dest. There we are. And what we see here is we've maintained the uh, rest of the path prefix. 
and uh, if you would need proxy settings you you could uh, maintain it here uh, but basically this is going to route us through to our user provided service um, and uh, make the outbound HTTP connection so now all we have to do is restart our XSJS service, but because we changed the bindings on the service, you see it there, file MTA YAML or package JSON change, it will do a full deploy. So we'll have to wait the whole time. We can't uh, just get the Delta injection um, because we changed the, the bindings to add this new user provided service. So this uh, take just a little bit. There we are, it is restarted and now remember we always test via our web module so that our security is set up correctly so we'll come here and now we can just change this url and we want to point to our outbound test application demo content epm services outbound test dot xsjs and we'll pass in command that we want to do an images search and then the search criteria we're going to search for all images that are tagged with the term hana and we got 277 results and this first one's a little hard here to see on the screen Looks like maybe some trees, a black and white picture of some trees. I'll tell you why the Library of Congress, when you search for HANA, you get so many uh, pictures of trees and, and uh, beautiful landscapes. is because HANA is the name um, of, um, I believe it's a extinct volcano in on the Hawaiian Islands. Um, so that's why we get so many nature pictures here. Uh, and there were 277 results, so we can add... Um, an index on the end here and we can skip around and see different results for instance the tenth picture of the 277th there that's a that's a very beautiful picture of a Hawaiian landscape looking out over the over the ocean there um, so what we've done here is we've seen how we're making the connection to the Library of Congress not from the web browser but from the server side it's the server-side JavaScript code running within Node.js and XS Advance that is making the outbound request, bringing the JSON back, and it's processing it and, and sending the results to the client, you know, in this case, one, uh, one bit at a, at a time here. Um, and as I described, there's many different scenarios that we could use. This is a very simplistic example to make you aware of uh, you know that this is possible and to give you some idea of how you can set up this scenario uh, or if you have these scenarios already in your um, XS classic environment how they can be migrated into XS advanced and we just use the uh, concept of the user provided service to replace the old um, XS classic administration console where we would set up and, and maintain a destination.